You were listening to 90.3 WMSC of Vermont Claire. My name's Jada Nivers. And I'm Nicole Facero. This is Floor of the Forgotten Bar, our Staten Island weekly show, which we cover all and every aspect of Staten Island, or as much as we can. And Nicole, what are we here for this week? We missed last week. Yeah, last week we had a DJ testing going on, but this week we are talking about neighborhoods in Staten Island. And, you know, there's a lot of them. We can't just, yeah, that's like crazy to do all of them, but we got we got some good ones. Yeah, we got some really good ones that it holds in them, so we're going to discuss all of that. But beforehand, we have a couple of Staten Island news stories to get to, to just go over a little bit. The first one relating to a man who thinks that by protecting the law, he is above the law, as, according to SILive.com, a New York Police Department officer from Staten Island has been arrested for allegedly dodging to pay several thousands of dollars in the Triborough Bridge in New York City and the Tunnel Authority and the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey tolls, travel tolls, like it was easy pass. 42-year-old Robert Lynch was suspended without pay following his January 24th arrest for alleged toll evasions that spanned as far back as from February 2019 to September 2022. A criminal report details how he evaded more than $3,000 worth each transportation agency and kept it up by using a license plate which he had reported was stolen. It does not specify what bridges he crossed on Staten Island, but the Otter Bridge Crossing, Bayonne, and Gothel's bridges are overseen by the Port Authority, and the Varzano Bridge is overseen by the Triborough Bridge and the Tunnel Authority. And Mr. Lynch has been charged with grand larceny and falsifying business records. Wow. When we travel sometimes, you know, we travel, when we go here, we take the Gallows Bridge. We take the you might get to Montclair, yeah. It's not really a good uh, up-to-par uh, infrastructure transportation. It's not. But sometimes we see people who uh, try to be sneaky and try to go past, like, yeah. through the easy path. And it's just so dangerous doing that. It's just... Yeah. I mean, it's good. I mean, this is kind of ironic because yeah. people, people around easy pass tools who try to catch people who do this, uh, state troopers or police officers. Yeah. And they caught a police officer in the act doing it. And- yeah, no. So just, it's just like, why? Why are you doing that? We heard recently at the beginning of the year that uh, holes increased, right? The uh, yeah holes for transport, like transportation in the Goggles Bridge, the uh, Turnpike, I mean, all those things increased. So I think it's good that the cop guy who was trying to dodge the system a little bit, so yeah. you know, his part pain like all of us yeah yeah and our, our second news story is kind of on the lighter side but also pretty weird at the same time yeah. as again according to slab.com a ship fender measuring 10 feet tall and 12 feet wide was discovered along a staten island southbound shoreline around page avenue and jolene avenue in tottenville and if you don't if you're like me and the first time you hear this article he said what is a ship fender well a fender is a part of a ship that is used to protect it from damage to vessels or other berthing structures, which relates to when we think about ports, right? We think about how some we see these videos sometimes about the ship going into the water. The fenders are used to like protect the ship from like damaging the actual uh, border itself, like the port. But big one was found on the shore of Staten Island, and Tondo resident Chris Camuto noticed the object the afternoon of February 23rd. And when he returned to where the fender was stuck, 3 p.m. that day, it had already started to flow towards Mount Loretto and Charleston. After that, it had disappeared the day after from view. Curiosity of the fender took to a Staten Island Facebook page where people speculated where the bumper originated from. Some said it could have traveled from Earl, New Jersey, specifically from a military base there. Considering fenders of this size could be worth thousands of dollars online, it is plausible that the people who lost it could be very frustrated. Yeah. That, I mean, just seeing, like, the photo of it is just so crazy. It's, like, mind-blowing. It's, like, wow. Yeah, I mean, we see a lot of strange things on, like, these jerks on the shore. Yeah. Oh, there's crazy things. This is, I would, I would honestly, like, I would not go near this if I saw this, like, um. No. Because, like, you don't know, we don't know much about, like, what it is. It's just, like. Be careful. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, so most of the time we see, like, trash and stuff. Hopefully they find it, because it looks like the article uh, details how it, like, went out of view. Yeah. 
Uh, hopefully they find it. Speaking about beaches. Speaking about beaches. There's some neighborhoods, right? Let's start off with some beaches that are not so nice to be around. Yeah. Specifically, the Newark Beach and Oakwood Beach area of New- of Staten Island. And if you aren't familiar with those two places, ground, seasonal, bungalows, wooden piers, and hotels. A man named Nathaniel Britton built the Britton Cottage, which stood for over 200 years in Newark Beach before being rebuilt in historic Richmond Town in 1967, which is what we're going to get into in a little bit. For Oakwood Beach, Oakwood Beach was dominantly a farming community when it was first founded. And it actually had an ocean resort up until the mid-20th century. It had a decent amount of inhabitants up until late 2012, when Hurricane Sandy brought a massive damage and negative overhaul, leading houses to be destroyed or scarce in the area, the ones still standing. And today, Oakwood Beach is home to its very own wastewater chemical treatment plant, where, according to a government website, it says 80 million gallons of wastewater discharge were prevented from, like, entering people's main pipelines uh, during Hurricane Sandy. And, oh my goodness, Nicole, Oakwood Beach is, it's not good. So I've never been there, but I know you, like, told me about it. I just, I mean, it's not in my neighborhood. It's not near me, so I don't see a reason why I would even go there, especially if it's not so nice. It is not good. So, I mean, okay, so t- can you, like, say some memories that you have from Oakwood Beach? So, my friends and I started, we cycled there, you know. Okay. New Dorp and Oakwood are connected to each other, like, next mm-hmm. two towns over. So, we cycled there when it was, when we were, like, in eighth grade or freshman year. And at first, I was like, oh, this place is so cool. Look at this place we just found. Oh, my gosh. And then we kept going more and more. Uh-huh. And it's great essence of contamination. Great essence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lovely. The wastewater chemical treatment plant and how, mm-hmm. like, I don't understand how four or five houses still there. Really? Like, how? Like, how are they living there? I don't understand because it's not, it's not good for your health. So, like, how far away from your house is this place? Oakwood Beach is really at the end of a road called Mill Road, where uh-huh. a bunch of it's fun, where a bunch of different roads intersect with one another. It's like a little circle. Mm-hmm. And actually, that's where the uh, entrance for the wastewater chemical treatment plant is. Oh. And Mill Road is, it's connected to the Newdorp Lane, right? It's uh, below Highland Boulevard for me, so I pass it every time mm-hmm. since I cycle. You know, so it's walking, it's about, you know, like 15 minutes, but driving, it's, you know, under under 10. Mm-hmm. But, uh, oh my gosh, this place is so bad. I remember more time we went there, like, there was a weird chemical smell. Mm-hmm. And we, did, we got rid of it because, like, we just won't go away, right? Yeah. It's not It's not very good, and I don't recommend going there because it's really unsafe as well because, again, the houses are scarce. Zero cameras, zero cops. Yeah, no, that's, like, not safe. No, and I think people go there, like, during the 4th of July to... Yeah, like, do you ever see, like, a big crowd of people ever going there to, like... No. Is there, like, a balance? Not... I want to be safe, and I don't mm-hmm. go there at night. I mean, yeah. Well, there has been times where my friends and I have, like, gone there and okay. have seen boxes of used illegal fireworks elite so people like go because there's like a fishing pier there right yeah I mean, mind you zero rails like zero like if someone could easily fall in the water that's not kind of safe thing. yeah so people go safety is like number one priority in that one no so that's not good but tell uh, nicole why don't you tell us about another not so great area in staten island yeah so another not so nice neighborhood in staten island is arthur kill and it is named after the waterway to its west, the Arthur Kill, which separates Staten Island from Union County and Middlesex County, New Jersey. It is on the southwest shore of the island, and it is 8.54 miles long and runs through the neighborhoods of Tottenville, Richmond Valley, Charleston, Rossville, Woodrow, Huguenot, Arden Heights, Annadale, Altingville, Greenbridge, Great Kills, and Richmond Town. So... It's just a really long road. I personally don't really have any, like, memories in this neighborhood. I mean, I know of Arthur Kill Road. It's such, like, a long road. I mean, it goes through all those towns in Staten Island. It's on the opposite side of the island for both of us. Right? Yeah, technically it is, yeah. Sometimes um, we we do drive there. and Okay, yeah. I, I, drove, I drove there, too. It's just, like, not, yeah. not, like, something, like, I'll, like, get out of the car for. The, there's something really memorable about Arthur Kill Road because... Instead of seeing like green for green trees or mm. mountains, 
You see old car junkyards. Yeah, it's just not the prettiest sight. No, no. But but it's there. It's it's just there. You know, maybe one day you know they'll renovate it or something. But for right now, it's just not the prettiest sight on Staten Island, especially to drive in. Exactly, exactly. To move away from Arthur Kill Road, right? Uh huh. Move to another aspect of Staten Island, like more north. It's a town called Old Place, right? And Old Place was established in 1661, 10 years before Newtorp was. Wow. And today it sits between the neighborhoods of Grasmere to the north, Dungan Hills to the south, South Beach to the east, and Concord to the west. It has been home to the headquarters of the Staten Island Advance since 1960. That's pretty cool. That it's, is cool. Yeah, that's, 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 that's I think that's, uh, that's that, a positive for, for Old Town. That's Island. a positive. That's a plus. Yeah, and, and I, again, it's, it's not really near my house. It's like a yeah, I've I've never even actually even heard of this place. Like I've never heard of old place. No, it's it's so weird. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's like the uh, as I just read, like the intersection of these towns, mm-hmm. and it does. It, it is nice in the fact that it has multiple different establishments in it, like uh, bakeries, uh, Carmel Richmond Healthcare and Rehabilitation Center, and Saint Dorothy's Elementary School. Right, that's uh, okay. in that area. The holidays to either go to the bakery, pick up something, or Again, if there's like a store near there, my mom or my family want to go to, that's where we go. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming that this place is like not near my neighborhood just because like I've never heard of an old place. Name old in them, right? Oh, uh, okay. So there's old town, which, is, which I just mentioned. Old town. Old place is a completely different. Oh, that's one. really different. Yeah. So old place is, it's kind of, it's the area directly under the Gothel Bridge. Oh, okay. I know you're talking about. It's on the way to Arthur Kill Road. It's like around Arthur Kill Road, I think. Arthur Kill Road is just a long road. It's just not, not at the bar. It's not. It's just yeah. And there's there's a portion. I mean, it's uh, old place is really like we mentioned at the start of the show. It's like for ports for mm-hmm. ship like put on cargo. There's a road called Western Avenue where we were talking about. I think at the first day of the show where my mom and my sister and I drove down it. Oh, I remember you saying that. And it's just so luxurious. On one side of the road, we have walls and walls of cargo. <laughs> Multicolored, probably sitting there for ages, cargo. And on the other hand, on the right side of the road, we have an old abandoned factory that's just decay. That's creepy. <laughs> yeah. That is... it's that, that The factory itself is called Port Ivory. And okay. I actually researched it. I, again, we, talk, we spoke about this. Closed in 2002, and it was home to kitchen soaps that had a scent all around the East Coast, right? Well, so around. People around the East Coast uh, got kitchen cleaning stuff uh, from Port Ivory, most likely. But now it's just it's just the game. And now it's just there. This just shows how, like, some places on Staten Island need to be a little fixed up. Yeah. But there are a lot of nicer neighborhoods in Staten Island. Why don't you, why don't you tell us a little? Yeah. One so one of them is the historic Richmond town. So... We're going to look back at some of the history here. Um, In the early 18th century, the town was named Richmond Town. It used to be a county seat and commercial center. It was established in 1958 with a joint project of the Staten Island Historical Society, which is an independent nonprofit cultural organization. It is an authentic town and farm museum complex and restores a living history village operates as a historical museum and shows the material culture of diverse histories of Staten Island. Really cool. It is really cool. It's I mean, I've been there I've been there a few times. Like going back, I used to be a Girl Scout in like elementary school and we went on I remember going on a Girl Scout trip to historic Richmond Town and, you know, I was like ten. So I was like, this is creepy. I mean, <laughs> looking back, it was it's not even that it was creepy. It's very, it's, a, it's really like a historical museum, and you are seeing how these really, like, I don't want to say old people, but like really back in the, like, how do I word that? I don't know the exact word for it, but uh, there are definitely some people who, like ancient. not ancient, <laughs> they just have something about them that they, and they, they, they enjoy, like, living as it, if we're living in, like, in, like, maybe medieval times or, like, not maybe you all and say like, as far as that, just like around like the nineteenth or twentieth century. Yeah, like different centuries. It's just really cool to see how they lived. I remember like the we went in. I don't know. It was I guess it was like a house we went in, and they were like churning butter, and it was 
yeah it was it was it was cool it was definitely like interesting yeah but, i mean that's i mean if we if we think back to our history classes that's how yeah a lot of families uh made their butter right yeah I Butter, go yeah, grab the butter, put it on a bagel. No, I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's work. I mean, they had to really work for a lot of the things that they needed. Historic Richmond Town itself is actually adjacent uh, with mm-hmm. with uh, pesky Arthur Kill Road again. Arthur Kill Road. And actually Snake Hill Road. I uh, Yes, I know Snake Hill Road. I, I personally have never gone into one of those houses that we see if you if our listeners uh, drive around that the house. Um, yeah. Never been actually in been in one of them, but if I'm going to the Staten Island Mall or to the Korean War Veterans Parkway to get to required you to go on off the Korean Road. Mm. Uh, that's that's when that's when we go past Rich, historic Richmond Town, right? Yeah. And actually, with historic Richmond Town is actually St Andrew's Church and Cemetery. Yes, I know you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I've never been in there, but I've drove past it. My grandma has told me that she and my grandpa, when he was alive, went there a lot. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so, I get, I, I, where, like, the location of it, though, is so eerie. Yeah, it is, it is eerie. It is a little eerie part and of Salem. I, I mean, have you ever driven on Seiko? Yeah. Okay, good. Because when I was learning how to drive, like, that was, that was not. Yeah, no, in the beginning, it's hard because you just have to drive slow but yeah. also fast because you're on a hill too so it's like you gotta yep. and the roads are windy it's just something it's just a place where you have to be really cautious driving sure. and uh remember we i think sometime within the past two years there's a story where a uh, big truck like a big big truck tried going up it and it mm-hmm. fell really it's no the, that's where it becomes dangerous yeah, definitely. It, it's also really narrow, too, and you really have to watch when you're going, like, up it and people are coming down. I know, also, there's an Eggers ice cream, like, in the historic Richmond town. Like, well, I'll talk about this in a different episode since my friends and I went there during COVID, but oh, it was, yeah. I've never been there. It was, at, I've been there a few times. It's fun. Okay, well, I'm I'm sure in, that, in, the, in the future, you can tell. In the future. Yeah. To move away from Arthur, uh, Arthur Kill Road. Snake Hill Road, far different town, to one of the corners of Sinai. It's a corner. Yeah. With the neighborhood of Fort Wadsworth. Fort Wadsworth is its own its own town. But it's really, really a government town because uh it's was a former military base, right? And this little this little fort. If we go on the Arizona Bridge, which connects that down to Brooklyn and we look down, uh, we see a little fort, right? And like walls like former military bases. And the first use of Fort Wadsworth for military purposes dates back to 1655 mid 1600s Mid-century. Mid-century. yeah centuries I, I can't calculate the fort itself Fort Wadsworth was built in 1663 and it was captured by the British during the Revolutionary War and it remained under their control until the end of the war in 1783 during the war of 1812 900 cannons were installed around Fort Wadsworth for use while New York City was not attacked during it in World War One, some portions of Fort Wadsworth were ready to fire 24-7. But in World War II, uh, it received little military action. And the actual fort closed in 1994. And the environment's not bad. It's not It's not a really bad place. It's not, like, unsafe. On a day like today, maybe, 9.27 a.m. Not many people might be there right now. Cause, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a good, it's a great walk, though. Great uh, exercise. Oh, definitely. It's a really good place for exercise. Yeah, I mean, I, during the summer... I always try to go there, like with my bike cycle, because mm-hmm. it is it is a lot of uphill, which yeah. takes some work. It does take some work because you got to put your bike in low gear and, and uh, the gears. Yeah, yeah, because remember when I first started doing it, like oh my gosh, this feels horrible. Yeah, I actually yeah. You, you, have you ever done it? Yeah, I did. I went there one, and I was I had twelve, and it, and I just started learning how to ride bikes with gear, so it was difficult for me to get up the hill. I did it, but it was hard. I mean, feel like I need to go back there. I feel like now because I feel like I would be able. It, it's difficult though going uphill. There's it is very hilly. Just takes practice. It, it does. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, again, yeah, I, I always try to go there when I cycle in the summer mostly, and it's oh, it's so nice for me uh, seeing all the cargo ships that go by, like the colors of them, mm-hmm. and- the ships. Even, like, just seeing the view of, like, the Arizona Bridge. You see the cars and trucks and buses on it. And 
if you bring binoculars, you could see the, the Statue of Liberty and uh, oh, really? the city, like Manhattan. That's so cool. Yeah. I know one time, like, like my family is very big on cruise ships. Like, we love cruise. Yeah, we're a cruise ship family. I know some people like, are afraid of it, but we just love ships. So I know a lot of cruise ships, like, if you're, if you're like, at Fort Wadsworth looking at the Verrazano Bridge a lot, you'll keep some, depending on the time of day and, like, the weather, you will see a cruise ship, like, go under the Verrazano Bridge, and it's so cool. I, I, I have seen one of those. I've seen Yeah. Do you know what ship it was? I mean, I think maybe Caribbean. Royal Caribbean? No, maybe. Oh, my gosh. I, I, think love, I, I can go on and on yeah, about cruises. One of my friends was actually on, like, the cruise that I saw. So I, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. That was the only time I ever saw a cruise ship. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Move away from uh, oceanic territory. Oceanic territory. Why don't you tell us about Manor Heights? Yeah, so Manor Heights, um, the, the name Manor comes from the fact that the neighborhood is close to Manor Road. The name Heights comes from the fact that the area is on a sudden elevation within its boundary. That's definitely near your house, right? That's the, near your house. That is like 10 minutes away from my house. So this neighborhood is located on the north shore of the borough. And it is the hilly part of Staten Island and is less densely populated and greener than other parts of the island. So, yeah, this is 10 minutes away from my house because it's literally where Wagner is. And Wagner was my high school. And I have to say it was a pretty good neighborhood. It was it was safe. It was it was a nice neighborhood. It is hilly. Like Wagner is on a hill. And I just find it really funny because now, like, I go to Montclair and Montclair is like on a mountain. So it's like, I don't know, I keep choosing about hilly schools, but. Um, we, what do we do? But yeah, Wagner, it's on a hill. It's really nice. Um, the houses are pretty there. Um, there's also like an area where like I, my friends and I, but like we used to like go to school and then we would go like get food somewhere and then go back to school for like rehearsal because we were in theater. So they had really nice places. They had like a donut world, they had pizza, a pizzeria, they had a wing world, and they had, like they had so many other places. And it was, I would say, it was a nice neighborhood. I don't really know much about. Would you consider yourself North Shore or South Shore? I'm definitely North Shore. When I was little, like right around the corner of my house, there's the South Shore Animal Hospital. Okay. I just thought, well, I think you are South Shore. That's why we're also so far from each other. Yes, Europe's in the middle. I just say it's the middle. Yeah, yeah you kind of, yeah. Middle. Yeah, center. Relating to kind of the middle of Santa, but also, yeah. you know, leading into like the, the northern part of it as well. It's a town called Midland Beach. And Midland Beach, east portion of Side Island, where it was actually once a resort. Wow. I actually didn't know it was a resort. Really? It was That's cool. Long, but like, if you look up old photos of Midland Beach, really, really interesting attraction. A lot, a lot of wow. population, like, crowded people in these photos yeah and that's because it offered theater performances a beach picnicking areas snack kiosks and numerous hotels and bungalows along with a six mile boardwalk which i love to cycle on yeah we tell midland beach was devastated from hurricane sandy yeah. in late 2012 yeah so i mean that's definitely i mean if i asked my grandma about this she would definitely know how midland beach was like in the, maybe in the mid in mid 20th century okay but sure there's less attractions from it they're definitely and i feel like they can do so much more attractions with it like through a theater performance a beach pink like that's so cool i mean i feel like covid also impacted it too i know they used to have like the food stands and now it's like closed well unless it's like during the no no, there is there is um there is a food mart there like a food stand yeah i know yeah yeah i i like i don't remember getting food from there and maybe like once I mean, it's not, I mean, if you're hungry and you're like... If you're, like, starving and you need food and, like, yeah. I know they have that restaurant. I've never, I think, my mom's told me I went there when I was, like, four. I don't remember it. So, do you know, have you ever been there? I have not. Okay. It's called the Vanderbilt. Yeah. It looks like a really nice restaurant. I've never been inside. But, me either. But it's built into a boardwalk, so if people are sitting outside, they get to see people like me cycling by. Yeah. That's that's a view. Uh, yeah. And some my sister and I like where we cycle. Mostly most of the parties happen on Saturdays. So when we cycle, it's like, all right, what are the odds that there's a party going on today? And if there is, then there's a lot of cars around there. Luxurious cars. Luxurious cars. Yeah. So let's 
That's just another nice aspect. Yeah, no, like walking there so nice. I know they have like I went to um some like breast cancer walks there. Um, yeah, I mean when I was I I go bike riding there. You know the ice cream truck is there, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. and um, why don't you tell us really quickly about um another nicer neighborhood? Another nicer neighborhood where, where people like to go shop. So this neighborhood is New Springville. And it was founded by Carl's Neck and was founded in 1680. It used to be called Carl's Neck Village. By the early 19th century, it was renamed Springville due to the freshwater springs and now called New Springville. It is a densely urban neighborhood in Staten Island, and the Staten Island Mall is located in New Springville. So, you know, Staten Island Mall, I feel like that's such a staple of Staten Island. When we think about the history of Staten Island, what's underneath that, Nicole? What's underneath the Staten Island Mall? The Staten Island Dump. Oh, I was like, what are you for? Yeah, no, no, that's what that's what it was. Like, uh, yeah, mid nineteenth, mid twentieth century. Like back then. Um, if we think about like around that area of like uh, Richmond Avenue, there's like a big hill. I know. Like, how, yeah. Yeah. If you drill, if we drill deep enough, we're gonna find some things. Yeah, definitely. But so, I mean, it's I'm I'm grateful to live in a part of the time period of Staten Island where we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. And if, if, again, like, I know I've said this, I've said this multiple times. I only go there when I need to go there. I don't yeah. For not. Yeah. No. I. I just. I can't believe how much like the mall has evolved like over the years. Like it used to just be a mall, and now like, I don't. I, I don't know when they started, but it really they really started expanding it. Like you know, they have like all these new restaurants. They have such like a big plaza of all these stores and shops. Like. I know that that Krispy Kreme has recently just been um open there, and the real and like even like man, you know how they expanded like the like they had Dave and Buster's now they have Barnes and Noble they have um Shake Shack like Chipotle like, in that whole area it's just really crazy that they really expanded the mall. Yeah, and I, I get um we're probably gonna see some more innovation in the future. Yeah, I could definitely see some more. We covered um. Well, we were covered. We were covered foods. Mm-hmm. You said you wanted a crumble cookie to come to Staten Island. The orange it is, and it is. And yeah. after the episode, I was like, "No way!" They must have heard us. They must have. They. So that's, that's. I mean, it's not clear where it's going to be. Yeah, it's not clear. It's a it pin pass. It would. Yeah, it's possibly. It would be very fitting. Because there's so much like empty space where they can really like add more things there, which is really good for you know humans. Yeah, and speaking about nice places for humans as well, probably considered the best neighborhood on Staten Island. Oh yeah, this is this is mm. it's it's a neighborhood called Toad Hill, Toad Hill, right? Mm-hmm. And Toad Hill has a lot of great history behind it because it was created in the mid 1600s, like most Staten Island towns. And the name Toad Hill comes from the German word Toad, more dead, and it and it is believed to be a reference to Moravian Cemetery built into the neighborhood. It is the home to Staten Island Academy, a high school and elementary school, which has a tuition ranging from ten thousand to forty three thousand dollars. Wow! That right there Why no? tells you a whole lot about the demographic. Yeah, system. definitely. Lots and lots of rich families here. Lots of them. Yeah, definitely. Personally, I've never been around. I mean, I've never liked to go walk. Yeah, never like. Probably very nice. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and and a little side note. Uh, the median household income for Toto is $120,000. And as of this year, the median listing home price, if people are looking to buy on uh-huh. Toto, $1.7 million. That, so, this is a lot. Rich family. Really, yeah. I mean, I've never gone out of my car or walked around it, but I have, like, drove past it multiple times. Yeah. And every time there, I'm like, whoa, like, houses are huge. It's such a nice neighborhood. It really is. I drive through Toad Hill uh, every time I come to and from campus. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I take exit 12. Okay. Exit 12. I get on from exit 12 on the Expressway. I get off exit 12, which is Toad Hill. And actually, there was a, there's a house in Toad Hill where it's right on, it's right on the road. And a person has all these statues. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen the statue house? Yes. That is such a, like, yeah. popular house. There was actually, I don't remember exactly what statue it was. It might have been, like, somebody, as if somebody's swinging from a vine in the jungle. Yes. Something like that. I know exactly what you're, I know what house you're talking I about. I think there was an article in the last few years where 
basically, I think either Staten Island government or New York City said, you got to take this down. Because really? like, yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. It's like, it's right over the rope. Yeah, no. I'm, back in the drive. I know. Right? So that went away, but most of the statues are still there. The statues are still there, but I mean, Cody, I would say, is about like 20 minutes away from my house. So, I, I mean, I only go there if I'm going like to the other side of the island, but it's yeah. really, it's a really nice area. And the Astana Academy, I drove past that, and that, yeah. Like, I, like, I, don't, I don't know anyone who lives in that area. One kid from my elementary school and high school lives in Toto. Really? Yeah, I've never, never went to his house. Though. I never went. Yeah, he, did, he did have a Nerf party. He did have a Nerf party in like seventh grade. Mm-hmm. But you need, a, you need a specific type of Nerf product to go. <laughs> and I didn't have it. That is so, that, oh. that's messed up. Everybody else went. I just didn't go because I didn't have the right. But that's neither here or there. Anyway. Neither here or there. That's old. That's under the bridge. That's and that past news. Yeah. Right now, so we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Nicole and I are going to discuss how we see our personal neighborhoods of Newdorp. Matt Newdorp for me, Nicole Westerly. Yeah. How we see our neighborhoods respectively. Yeah. But, so if you're interested in hearing about that, stay tuned. And welcome back to 90.3 WMSC of Vermont Clair. My name's Aiden Ivers. And I'm Nicole Pizarro. Uh, so this is Florida Forgotten Borough. We've been talking about neighborhoods for the past 43 minutes. And listeners, if you just, if you we're just tuning in, uh, we talked about uh, the house in Toyo with the statues and how uh, the person took down one of them. Yeah. And my dad just texted me. It was Tarzan. Tarzan. I remember. Yeah. Bye. That's what got taken down. That's what we're taking out of the It makes It makes sense. Safety hazard. But, but that will it was be, cool to see. But That will always remain a special place in our hearts. Yeah, and I, I will never forget that. What will also reign in our hearts. It's our own neighborhood. So, Aiden, yes. tell us about your neighborhood. Sure, I will. I will. So, I live in the neighborhood of New York, not New York Beach, regular New York, above High Humble. Okay. And as we mentioned before in the show, it was founded in 1671. And in the late 19th century, it became home to some of the members of the Vanderbilt dynasty, which we'll talk about in a later episode. Yes. Yeah. We have a lot of history about them in Side Island. And on January 1st, 1898, it was consolidated as a part of New York City along with the whole of Staten Island as Richmond County. And for the environment of my neighborhood, it certainly is convenient because if you walk down my corner, there's a bus stop on one side of the street and train station on the other. Yeah, so you saw in, every, in the transportation episode, you talked about like the train station. Yeah, if we don't have, I've never been on a, like a real like city bus. I have been on yeah. an express bus and I have been on a train. If our cars aren't available, yeah. those are the places to go. Or if somebody else picked me up. But, mm-hmm. um, so that's pretty convenient. And if you walk down the Dorp Lane, there's loads and loads and loads of different restaurants and different stores you can go to, which is pretty convenient as well. Delis. But I will say, though, Nicole, the littering is pretty fre- frequent. Littering. Like, if you walk around, yeah, that's... you see all the garbage on the ground, which is not nice. Not nice. And also, uh, most days of the week, like for rush hour between 3 and maybe 7 o'clock, I live, again, I live... Uh, parallel to the Staten Island train station so there's a road going north and south unlimited cars well, this is a line really? going back because it's rush hour people are trying to go yeah. out so that's kind of that's kind of uh, muggy as well it's not good it's not really it's not really a nice sight but as overall I'm, I mean I've lived in the same house for the past almost 20 years oh I'm gonna be it almost 20 years that's so crazy I'm really really grateful yeah how much like I've grown to love my neighborhood, love my house. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom and dad have done a great job refurbishing some things, you know. Yeah. I, my dad my dad told me, like, when he first, my mom and dad first bought my house, my whole backyard was just a mess. So now what, like, have you done to your house that, like, is different now than so, how it was before? My mom, if you ever, my backyard, listen, my, my backyard, pristine gardening and pristine like it's like work chair okay okay it's really nice you know my mom puts a lot of effort into that and my mom, and again like my mom and dad like make the best they really make the best decisions when it comes to what it is what is what is required for you know a good uh, good home definitely yeah and my some of my friends from elementary school also live around my house and that's how i knew them and got to know them in elementary school. that's nice so, now they've gone their separate ways, but every now and then I see them, and it's nice to see them at SketchUp. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we did talk about in the school episode how I literally live 
90 degrees, 90 degree angle from my school. So that was my commute every day. Yeah. And it was, it was great. I mean, miss that, miss that part of my life. Miss that vibe. Yeah. I, I don't go to New Dorp often because it is, it is far for me, but I do have a dentist on New Dorp. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of medical buildings around. Yeah. That's the only time I usually go there. And I would say it's a nice neighborhood. Oh, definitely it is. Yeah. I, uh, in my free time on how today, I you know, when I go home, I enjoy walking. Yeah. Um, try to, you know, try to walk around that new door, Grand City, that's in town. Mm. And, uh, it's just a really, it's really uh, unforgettable, I think. Right. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your home in Westerly? Yeah. So Westerly, I've been living there for, yeah, now I'm going to be 19 this year. So I've been living there 19 years. My parents bought the house in 2004, which is when I was born. So. And it's actually crazy because my grandma lives down the street. And so my, which is like kind of like another block. And my mom's friend lives in the house that I live in now. And now my mom owns the house, which is okay. really, it's, it's like really crazy. But to go along with some history of Westerly, um, the National Prohibition Campground Association bought 25 acres of land in Westerly in 1877. Many of the local streets in Westerly are named after early leaders of the prohibition movement, such as Neil Dow, and for states that supported anti-liquor movement, such as Maine and Ohio. It is a clean and quiet residential neighborhood that is located in the northwestern part of Staten Island. It also has easy access to public transportation. Now, that's really interesting. Let me ask you, Nicole. Are there any, like, are there any bars near your house with the prohibition? You know, I don't know. I don't have a definite answer. It's definitely really interesting, though, to have that part of the United States, you know, around the 1920s. Yeah. For a prohibition. That's really, that's really interesting. It's really, yeah. Uh, you know, we think about, I think they're called speakeasies. Mm-hmm. Those, those were the, the underground places where they made liquor secretly, illegally. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I mean, obviously there's bars like all over Staten Island, yeah. but I know, I, don't, I think Jimmy Max is technically a bar. Jimmy Max is a pizzeria. That is literally like five minutes away from my house. And it's funny because I also used to do dance when I was younger. And it was it was so convenient. Like I could literally walk there. It's like I would go to like my dance class. And then I would go to Jimmy Max Pizzeria like right after. Because it was like right there. I miss those times. You know, Westerly, I would say it's a very, it's also a very greenery part of Staten Island. I feel like, you know, you have, you have Westerly Park, which is really nice. You have really nice gazebo and they have a lot of events there. Like when I was younger, PS30 is also like literally five minutes away from Westerly Park. And so I would go there. And it's funny because, you know, talking about like the streets on Staten Island, like Neil Dow, like I've been on Neil Dow. Like it's a street, which is really crazy that people live there. It's like named after the early leaders of their prohibition movement. And I didn't even know that until like I read the article. Yeah. Really, that's a great way. Yeah. I honor the people because I always wondered like why like what it, even like we have the streets that aren't like states like you have Ohio Maine and I'm just like I always wonder like why are these street names named after states and now we know why a nice callback to that it really is it's nice to honor them and even like what going back to Westerly Park it's really a great I used to hang out there when I was younger more than I do now but yeah, you know, they ha- I used to go to, like, my elementary school carnivals. Um, they also do, like, Westerly Folk Festival, which is where a lot of, like, artists will go there in, like, the fall. And I- I've-, I've been going there the past two years, and it's really nice. It's, like, artists will, like, get to perform, and then you have, like, different food, like, vendors and all that, which is really cool. To my house, though, like, my parents bought it when I- in 2004, so right when I was born, and it's definitely not what it is today because basically i would say before like because my house we did a huge renovation during the pandemic which i i can go into that further i feel like a, yeah, later later but going with the house though it is like you know we used to have a pool and we had a lot of concrete there was no really like grasslands and we used to have like a blue slide like, we used to have like, all that but now it's like we we wanted more concrete space because literally our pool was taking up like the whole yard and like the pool was like underground and like when we bought the house it was there so that was a sacrifice right yeah so 
And also, we had to shrink the pool just because it was under like like illegal conditions. Yeah, so we had to shrink the pool, which I mean we wanted to anyway because we needed more like yard space anyway. So that changed. Even our house, like the actual house itself, changed. Like we got like new floors, we got new countertops for the kitchen. Like all of our rooms changed, the walls. That was definitely an adventure of the house renovation. And I definitely want to go more into that during the COVID episode because it was it was crazy living in a house renovation during the pandemic, during remote school, which is, oh, it's not. It's a COVID pandemic that was going to be what? So March 15th this year is two days after the yeah. year start of COVID. Three years, three years three ago. Years. Three, it's crazy to say, three years That's ago. That's crazy. That was when, you know, you're charged to say, well, Ellen's comedy is not good. Yeah, no, we need to definitely dive into all of that. But I mean, so to get back to your house, though, um, you mentioned a blue slide, right? Yes. Is that still in your backyard? So we still we have a slide, but it's not blue. We got a whole different slide now. It's like tan. We have a grotto. Like we went, I think because of the pandemic, it was like we were bored and we wanted to we wanted to fix our house up because why not and yeah so we have like a grotto with like a waterfall in our pool we have a bit of a, like a tan slide yeah so we have a whole like barbecue area too Love to do. yeah that's really cool and i'm excited to hear about uh, more about that uh the next episode right yeah definitely and yeah i mean it's crazy to think how again like Time is time flies. I guess you'd say time really does fly. Because, because I remember, I remember like being a little kid and seeing all the different like changes to front door and the yeah, exactly. we had and looking at old pictures to today. How swift! That it's just like every a lot of things can change. Especially like I can't believe I've been like I can't believe I've been alive for like almost oh, nineteen years. Like whoa. I know it's like nice to see how your neighborhood can really change too. Like, sure. especially with like everything that it's gone through with like the hurricane and COVID, like a lot of things can happen in that amount of time. And yeah. it could be good, it could be bad. You never know. Yeah. I mean, luckily for me, I mean, we're going to talk about this hopefully uh, in timely matter, but for Hurricane Sandy, mm-hmm. um, we live like away from the shoreline. So we didn't really get yeah. really that much impacted. But me too. Still. It's still crazy how, like, just a sense of hurricanes and such. Yeah. Snow. Snow, yeah. Our houses have, have tolerated for us, right? Yeah. Because I think, I'm pretty sure my, in my neighborhood, my house was built sometime around 1920. Okay. So, 102, 103 years old. Wow. To have that, you know, and it's, again, it's gone through a lot of renovation. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, yeah I mean. Yeah. It's definitely, like, I remember, um. As a little kid, like riding around on my bike, but when I was learning, like the ins and outs of like, yes, like the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Do you have like training wheels? Yes, the training wheels. I remember those days. And that's another thing, really. Like, riding around and see my neighbors. My neighbors have been really awesome as well. Yeah. Really, luckily, I haven't. I mean, yes, there has been some times where my neighbors have been a little bit cuckoo. It's normal. And yeah, no. it was today. Today, my neighbor is like, uh, I actually live, you know, in a double house. Okay, okay. And my neighbor who lives next to us is really cool. And across the street, they're really cool as well. Mm-hmm. You know, we, uh, we kind of we exchange gifts with one another during holidays. So it's good to have those relationships, even though yeah, it's definitely. kind of related, right? Yeah. And I mean, uh, I just it's just a matter of a sense of gratitude and feeling. Exactly. Thinking about, thinking about um, just how much we've had to deal with over the course of our lives right yeah definitely even like my neighbors like it's crazy to see how much my neighbors change because you know we had a next door neighbor and you know what he oh he's lived there like all his life and then he recently just moved i think to new jersey and now we have these new people so it's crazy how you know the whole neighbor could really could really evolve when you have new neighbors in there even like my house we had like a tenant and so, like, it's kind of like an apartment in my house where, like, like the person, like, yeah. And so, well, we used to, so we used to have a tenant, and it was really nice growing up because she was about, I don't know how old, but, you know, she had grandchildren. And, you know, we used to be, me, my sister and I were, like, 
like really close friends with her grandchildren and so whenever her grandchildren would go to her house like her apartment we would be there and we'd get to play with them like i never doing a lot of lemonade stands with them and now she moves out and my grandpa lives there now so yeah i do i mean we we did grow apart a little because i feel like we're a little bit different now. <laughs> but but yeah those types of relationships that we think about right even if we're not blood related to these people exactly like you know you have such a connection yeah yeah and i mean not uh, there has been some for, for my double house i think there's been a total of four different people that have lived in my, my double house okay and that in my life at least there might probably was like more yeah lived before my family moved in but just uh, i remember one of the first neighbor that I remember growing up, she moved to Arizona, and we still keep in touch. My grandma still calls me. Oh, that's so good. Nice. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Little, little, little. All those connections, you know. Yeah. 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 Again, right now, as I said, my neighbor right now, in my double house, he is really awesome because he, I think he's like a mechanic, mm. on super luxurious cars, super luxurious ones. So oh, every now and then he, every now and then you see like you know just a McLaren. Yeah. Lamborghini Park. Wow. And that's that's the incentive to take some photos. That's it's, something. Yeah. yeah. I when I was younger I used to I used to have a whole al I still have it on my phone, a whole album cool cars. Mo- majority of them are his that I think he Really? He, that's cool. That's good just, for him. Yeah, that's just another another aspect of like what it means really live in a neighborhood and have all those connections with the people that you live. I mean, yeah, there's going to be people you don't like normal. The, the, but... the flip side of that, right? Oh my gosh. So, all around my house, right? All around my street, there are multiple different streets. Double-sided parking on on all of them. Yeah. But you know who doesn't have double-sided parking? Who? Me. Oh. My street doesn't have it. So, it's like, this. sometimes, sometimes, yeah. neighbor has luxurious cars. And they're parked on the street. Like two of them are both his cars. That's you know, I get, so that's that's where I get like the idea of like, well, that could be a little bit irritating because yeah, scarce. And if you take it off two cars, two different spots, and they're both yours, that's yeah, every driver, every driver. Yeah. You know, so at least one of them is okay, but that's not a here or there. Uh, anyways, listeners, this has been Florida Forgotten Borough here on ninety point three WMSC Albert Montclair. Thank you very much for tuning in. I had a really good conversation. I had a great conversation too. Really, really great to talk about it. History of Staten Island. Definitely. And all the neighborhoods in it. If you want to hear us retell our COVID memories, stay tuned for then. And enjoy your Wednesday.